power tends to corrupt. And absolute power corrupts, absolutely. I would wager that you've heard this quote before. It's from Lord Acton. But I would also wager that you haven't heard more of the letter that this quote was contained inside. I'm going to read a little bit more because it's relevant to what we're going to discuss today. Power tends to corrupt and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Great men are almost always bad men, even when they exercise influence and not authority. Still more when you super add the tendency or the certainty of corruption by authority. Today we're going to talk about influencers. What is the influencer? What is this phenomenon? And how does it relate to what we've already discussed about the algorithm, machine learning, and artificial intelligence? It's very important to understand this because the influencer is a brand new phenomenon. In fact, influencer is short for social media influencer, but we probably should call them algorithmic influencers. So as I said in the last video, what we are living inside of now, what we are being motivated and moved by is an algorithmic system, an algorithmic plantation, if you will, in the attention economy. This algorithm's job is to capture our attention. And what this algorithm is stuck with for now is it needs to capture our attention with user-generated content. So basically, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, TikTok, it's other humans who are creating the content that the algorithm is then sorting, preferring, and serving to you to try to keep your engagement, to try to keep your attention on it 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. That necessarily means that there is going to be some content and some content creators that are more effective than others at creating engagement. Those that are the most effective at creating engagement in a sort of a feedback loop will be shown more often by the algorithm. So you think about this for a minute and it makes a lot of sense. The algorithm is working to show you something that's going to grab your attention and hold it so that it can then ostensibly serve you ads. So some content is just not going to be effective at that. Some content is going to be kind of effective, and some content, some small piece of that content is going to be super effective. When that content is super effective, it will prioritize the serving of that content in the future when it runs across a similar pattern to the ones that it has seen before. So, in other words, it will prioritize it when it is serving content in a pattern that has worked previously. Those individuals, those content creators, whose content does this the best, grabs engagement at the highest level from the most number of people, is the most reliable for the algorithm, the algorithm will reward by showing more often. And those people become what are called influencers. Now, Influencers definitely influence the viewers who are just simply consuming the content. But the most important influence, the most important influence that they have is on others who are creating the content, other content creators. And so it is the influencers that train the algorithm, the algorithm trains the influencers, and in that the influencers are also training other content creators. So other content creators are trying to, let's say, ride on a specific topic. And so what are they going to do? They're going to go and look and see, okay, within this certain topic, what do the videos look like that are successful? What is the content? What are the, what are the people who are the most successful, who have millions of views, let's say? What are they saying? What do the thumbnails look like? What are they doing? On YouTube, this is longer form content, and so we can totally see that. You can see that in a particular topic, you'll see the thumbnails look the same, the layout, the pacing of the content is similar. On TikTok, since it's shorter form, what you see is that you'll see an influencer doing some weird thing, some weird gesture, maybe it's these weird ticks, some weird challenge, right? Doing some duet or something like that, and then you will see everybody else do it. 
because they want to be served alongside of it when somebody gets into that sort of a TikTok rabbit hole. And so what this really shows us is that the algorithm is, in an economic way, just off preferences, driving this. Now, it does something additional. If you have monetized content, for instance, on YouTube, if you have monetized content and your content is being shown millions of times, well, now you can actually start to make a living off of being an influencer, which means the best equipment. You can hire a production staff. You can produce more videos every day. And this is very good for the algorithm because it wants to serve more of your videos. The more you make, the more it will serve because the more it has to work with, the deeper the rabbit holes can go. And so this brings us to a very, very interesting place where just by simple economic means, just by simple supply and demand, the desires of individuals to be able to live off what they're doing, to get more attention, because in the first place, people started doing this. They started producing videos when they weren't getting paid to do it because they wanted attention for the most part. I mean, this is what influencers are good at. They're good at grabbing attention, and they're people who crave and desire attention more than anything. And what they need to do, as we've seen with certain influencers, they themselves will change to match what gets more views, and it's the algorithm that's generating and deciding who to show it to so that it gets more views. So it's actually the algorithm influencing the influencer. So the influencer becomes what we could call an icon or an embodiment of the algorithm itself. So if you want to see the values of the algorithm, if you want to see the algorithm for what it is, all you need do is look at influencers. All you need do is look at how they are changed and corrupted, as Lord Acton said, from the power of influence. And even Lord Acton in 1887 says, even if they exercise influence and not authority, if their power just comes from influence, they will be corrupted. Power tends to corrupt. If you want to see the algorithm, look at how influencers become corrupted. And that is always the trajectory of the influencer, isn't it? They have their rise, and then people can't stand them anymore. They're corrupted, and down they go. And part of that decline generates more views for the algorithm. So the algorithm takes them up, and then it has them decline. And for those of you who have some spiritual background, you will recognize that pattern. You will recognize that pattern. So, there's a spiritual aspect and a technological aspect. I think that this is very important. So, what we are going to look at next is we are going to look at machine learning. We're also going to look at artificial intelligence because these are two very important things. Because, again, right now the influencers are humans. So, the algorithm knows what it wants and it's... So it has subtly influenced human beings to become its icons and create the content that it wants, but it's reaching the point where it will be able to create content itself. Right now, it's still not perfect, right? It has to still influence human beings to do it, but when it can create its own content, something totally new and worrisome will come into view. We need to talk about that because the cage is slowly coming shut. So it's very important that we talk about it. That's what we'll talk about next.